Scott Thompson um, asked you to come and make a public comment. Said so you would have the floor. Yeah, thank you very much, Denise. Or the seat. Or the seat, whatever you want. The seat? Yeah, the hot, the hot seat. Hot seat. <laughs> hot seat. <laughs> Warm it up for everyone else, Scott. All right, thanks. Um, Scott Thompson. <laughs> Hi, Scott. <laughs> uh, we know you. Yeah, that's the problem. <laughs> um, anyway, I just wanted to fill you in on the on this school district, the merge district budget, mm -hmm. because we're probably going to the board is probably going to approve it on Wednesday. There's a forum right before at five thirty. Um, Wednesday's a big day, of course. Yeah, yeah, Wednesday's yeah, yeah. Middlebury, as I'm planning to be too, um, as is Dorothy. Yeah, once it's going to be our talk. Yeah, uh, don't, it, it's okay. Uh, that's why I'm here. Yeah, good, so, uh, Just to you. kind of give you a sense. Hey, Don. Um, anyway, uh, overall, it's probably the best budget that we're going to get. Um, the, the bottom line, though, is another 6.6 .6 cents increase in the education tax for Calus. Um, what that means over two years is 18.9 cents in the two years of the merged um, district. And this will be the first year? Um, FY21? Well, uh, FY, FY um, our tax rate this year for, for this FY20, current yep. FY20 yep. is 12.3 um, cents higher than for FY19. And it, for FY21, it will be 6.6 .6 on, on top of that. You mean FY22? FY21. No, we're in FY. No, sorry. We're in FY20. We're in FY20. Yeah. So FY21 would be an additional 6 and then. 6.6, .6, yeah. And then the same thing in FY22. We don't know. We don't know about 22 yet. Um, I, my, I think this may be the last of the fat years because next year, um, the, the economic expansion can't go on forever. Uh, and at some point, things will tighten up. Um, but the, so 6.6 .6 cents for Calus um, is the increase from this current fiscal year to the next. And is that one. driven by the 12, 10 to 12% health care increase mostly? Um, it's that's part of it. A lot of it is putting more um, uh, putting more resources into um, early education, which I think is a good thing. Um, there's also more special ed. Special ed needs continue to just yeah. rise like um, crazy. So it's a combination. So it's, it's a combination of different things. Um, I think, you know, it's probably the best we're going to get. Yeah. My, my problem is, having worked on the U32 um, budget and before that on the Calus Elementary budget, um, working on a $35 million budget is slightly terrifying. And especially because we, we've completely lost a level of detail, the school by school detail. Mm -hmm. We're just, you know, it's just the whole picture that we're working with. Mm -hmm. So we have, we have no idea really what's going on at the school level, mm -hmm. except in the case of the debt, which we, you know, we know that that's continuing to be distributed year after year, um, you know, on the basis of what share we have of the... Of You're talking the, about the other town's indebtedness. The other Arms. town's indebtedness. Arms. East Montpelier, Arms. Middlesex, and Berlin. Yeah. Right. So, um, at, at any rate, the, the education spending, you remember the, the school tax rate is like a four-story fraction with the, the education spending at the top, and that is rising by 3.09% net, which sounds good, except it's not really, because it's due to a one-time payoff of a big U32 bond. So almost a half a million dollars per year of a U32 bond is dropping out. And right. still, 
it's a three, which is about 1.6%. Dropping out this it, yeah, it's paid off. Basically. It's paid off this year. And yet you're still so seeing these increases. We're still seeing these increases. So it would be closer to 5% increase without that, um, without that one-time payoff. payoff. So what is the overall <coughs> increase percentage? Well, um, so education spending mm -hmm. is going up by 3.09%. But the, next, the, the first denominator is the equalized pupils. So education spending per equalized pupil. Equalized pupils district-wide are going down slightly. So that 3.09 becomes equalized spending, uh, educational spending per equalized pupil of 4.61% up. And that's what you'll see on the warning, is the plus 4.61%. What's going down? Overall, there are fewer weighted pupils in the district. Okay. The irony of this, and it's another kind of slightly bitter irony, is that callous pupils have gone up really sharply. So, but what we're doing, we're kind of subsidizing um, the rest of the district, uh, both with the debt um, and seemingly with equalized pupils and with the small school grant uh, Worcester and Callis receive small schools grant, but those get distributed too. In the same way that the cost of the debt is distributed, the revenue of the small schools grant is distributed. So we get, you know, um, we kind of get. And the other schools don't way. get those grants. No, they don't get small no. schools. No, because they're not. Because they're not too small. many pupils. I guess so. Yeah. So we get a grant that then has to be shared. Other towns have debt, which we get to share. Yeah, exactly. Okay, got you it. get the picture. That's got fair. It. Yeah. That's how it's balanced. It's, yeah, it, except it always seems to balance in, to our disadvantage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, the, uh, let's see. Yeah, and the common level of appraisal is another crazy thing that's working to our disadvantage, too. Of course. Um, uh, and this is something that just makes no sense to me. The whole point of merging is one board, one budget, one education tax rate, and five common levels of appraisal? What's that all about? Oh, no. We're subsidizing people who aren't at a appropriate CLA? I don't, the tax people will say no, but um, oh, I don't- that's just not right. It, it's, I, I, I think, you know, because that's driven by the select board, not the school, and if that and that that gets piggybacked on the school tax, because a town, one town hasn't kept up with their CLA, right, which we have. Like Stowe is way 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 low; they're getting mm -hmm. penalized yeah. this year. Yeah. So anyway, um, that is uh, that's sort of another. another it's like another. three triple whammy. Yeah, kind of I'd say. Yeah. Um, the, the one interesting thing, um, from my perspective, this U32 bond, uh, almost a half million dollars, that was barely a speed bump in the expansion of the, of the budget, um, that's roughly what uh, the estimate is for what the savings would be from closing Callis Elementary School. So basically, the savings would be essentially imperceptible uh, if, um, if Callis were to be closed. According to the efficiency study that was done a few years ago, um, that was, they estimated $435,000 in savings from sending all the sixth graders to U32, um, closing Callis, uh, combining Middlesex, uh, Doty, and Romney, and um, sending callous pupils, sort of distributing callous pupils to the neighboring schools. So, um, and 45,000 in 2015 is roughly a half million mm. now. Yeah. So, um, basically, if anybody says, oh, we can save lots of money by closing callous, tuh, no. Um, it'll just, it'll barely slow the, you know, the juggernaut. Mm. So we removed, um, usually we have on our warning, we remind people that, you know, there's school directors to be 
voted and Judy confirmed today that we don't need to put that on our warning. It's on your warning? It is. Okay. Yes. So we t I, I took it off. Great. Okay. okay. Uh, you're, you're good. Um, okay. I, I hope... Um, I hope these warnings are being shared. Do you, do you have a feeling that the communication between the superintendents and um, and the town office is working? I have no idea. Oh. <clears throat> okay, it should, well, I'll ask her about it on Wednesday. Yeah, ask Judy what she yeah. thinks about the communication. I know um, we had some issues, mm -hmm. you remember, yeah. which I won't go back into. Um, so. We hope to do our part to make the communication good. And I've heard tires on the buses now. <clears throat> Suppose the front. Suppose it always checked. I, I have not. No. <coughs> yeah. yeah, John will check. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Is there anything else? So just real quick, you mentioned special ed demands on for special ed have yeah. increased. So are you able to meet those those needs? We fully? are. For now, we are. Um, as of, I think it's supposed to be not next fiscal year, but the, the year after, um, this Act 173, the block grant the, um, for special ed, is supposed to go into effect, which is based on population, not based on your actual account. But there's some- Is that good or bad? I, I think it's bad, okay. because it basically- It assumes a certain percentage? Uh, yeah, you get stuck. It's like the welfare reform um, that turned into a block grant back in 1996. Right. Those block grants from the federal government to the states have never increased, not once, in all those years since. Hmm. So a block grant, um, in my experience, is, a, is basically a way to kind of step back bit by bit and have your contribution slowly lowered at the rate of inflation. Mm -hmm. Okay then, we'll look forward to hearing from you again with some more good news. Thanks. I, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Yeah, uh, thanks, Scott. We really appreciate you and Dorothy on the board. Thank you very much. Uh, I, Dorothy, I cannot tell you how wonderful she has been. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just want to crawl into a hole and, and go to sleep for months. I but, bet. But she, she won't let me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you again. We really Thanks appreciate it. Thanks for the guys. Thanks for the guys. Thanks for the guys. Okay. Um, that was public comment. Is there any addition or changes to the agenda? Okay. Toby. Good evening. How are you? Come and join us, Toby. It's nice and warm. <laughs> <laughs> Not for long. Not for long? <laughs> How's it going? It's going okay. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, broken just, trucks and we have broken sick, trucks? sicking kids and yeah. Uh, what truck? What happened? Oh, uh, one of the hydraulic clutches uh, that drives the hydraulics and one of the trucks failed. So. What year truck? The 2017. The new one? No. Oh. 17. 17. Yeah. Um, yeah. So well, with the, we have a spare truck and it didn't really affect mm -hmm. anything. Uh, and that truck's in being repaired at the moment, or um, either we have the clutch this afternoon and we're going to put it in tomorrow, or it's going to Fairfield on Wednesday. Oh, we can do it. it. You guys we can do think it. so. I don't know. Okay. Paul was going to go up there to see. Oh, good. We have another okay. truck going up there for a, a, a warranty repair. Okay. So we had our kind of our first um, weather event with um, the road commissioner being gone. Mm -hmm. um, and you said you had told us at a previous meeting that you're kind of doing the same thing, you know, looking at the weather, telling the guys to come in the night before, what time to come in. Um, what are we doing about weather events where you haven't been able to plan for that? Are you getting That's up? every weather event. <laughs> well, I don't so know. So every forecast that says there's only going to be a half an inch of snow turns into three inches, and that's, you know, unfortunately, unless you're getting out of your house at three in the morning and seeing what the conditions are, that's an unpredictability. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, for the most part, I'm trying to look ahead, and if there's any chance of any precipitation in any mm -hmm. situation, I'm trying to call the guys in. But, you know, if the forecast says it's clear and possibility of less than half an inch accumulation, 
A couple of times I have not called the guys in and it became an inch and a half or two inches of white powder, which is not critical, it's not dangerous, but had I known it was going to be two inches of white powder, I would have had the guys come out and um, committed three to take care of it. So that's uh, something that's, you know, that's going to be a re not recurring because now if there is just a chance of a half an inch in the forecast, I'll probably bring the guys in and we might have times where they come in and just sand or something just because they came in. As, so a as a preventative, as a preventative <coughs> ahead of not knowing what the weather is. So a number of us all receive one call of complaint. Right. I did not receive from any other Cal's resident. Correct. But it was about and a particular location. Mm -hmm. well, it was I, about it was about those events where there was snow on the events, road. But it's where, six what location? North Cal, North Cal, Peak and Brook Road. Right. Right. The flat road. Yeah. Um, it was a, just a generic, it was about, hey, you know, this should be plowed for the school buses. And again, <coughs> it's an event that, and I can tell you that if... Well, the school it, buses did not complain. No, no complaints. Right. Yeah. It's not flat though, John, there's a hill, right. a twist yeah. going up here. Mm -hmm. But this, it was about the situation of there being snow on the road in the morning when the buses were going. That was what the complaint was about, and I understand oh, that. Okay. I yeah. understand that. It was at like 6.30 in the morning, and I don't know, we don't know if that was a morning that the road crew came in early and... They didn't, no, they that didn't. was a morning they did not come in. They did in. not come in. Right, because the forecast that night was for less than a half an inch of accumulation. And again, even if you get up at 3 in the morning and you look out and it's hardly snowing, from 3 in the morning till 7 and 6.30 or 7, you can get 3 inches of snow. Mm -hmm. So if you wake up and look out the window at 3.30 and say, uh, not bring them in. You still can have that same problem, even if you're up in the middle of the night. Mm -hmm. It's it's a flip of a coin. It's you know it's. Did you explain it that way to the person who? I was certainly playing? did. Okay. Yeah. And how? And and I can tell you from my experience, there are times when Alfred, when he was doing this, missed the boat mm -hmm. and didn't and get out, and right. everybody else. And again, other towns mm -hmm. decide to do that with different mm -hmm. sensibilities and experience and that stuff. So. Sometimes we do it and other towns don't. So mm -hmm. it's, you know, it's a... And I saw that previous week, so in East Montpelier. It's, so. it's a judgment call mm -hmm. and you don't want to see my trucks out there sanding on a bare road. Right, that's the only complaints. And you don't want to see overtime for f guys sitting from four in the morning till seven not doing anything. Right. So it's a balance and it's a judgment call and sometimes you're going to hit the mm -hmm. home run and get ahead of it, and everybody's going to think the roads are, do are great, and other times you're mm -hmm. going to make a different decision, and it's going to, every, somebody is going to have a difference of opinion about what the condition of the road should be. And how will Roger Hill, we're on board with Roger Hill now, right? Well, we've always been on board. He's always sent us the email, but we will be talking to him on right. radio, so which is a little bit... So will that help? No. And is that on now? Are we doing that? Have we made that process? I called him. I have not received his, his bill yet, but he is, yeah, he's been notified that we are going to pay Has, Does he said, thanks, it'll be good to hear from you. Got it? Yeah. Yeah? yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he's acknowledged that. Mm -hmm. Well, I posted something on Front Porch Forum very briefly, not saying a lot, um, you know, that the road commissioner was on with the select board approved leave of absence, that you yeah. were fulfilling that role. Thanks so for not putting my phone number in it. Um, so I guess my expectation is then that you're going to check the phone at the garage every day, the email at the garage every day, which you said you can do remotely. Mm -hmm. um, and I have been. Okay, great. Um, you know, three or four times a day to yep. check on things. And, then, and that's working okay for you? Yeah, and for the most part I'm in the shop every morning. Um, if I, you know, if I send them out at three, they don't get back till eight or nine. So mm -hmm. I'll usually go back and check in, check in with them mm -hmm. after the route, see what's happened or whatever. Right. Um, I saw Michael over work on the payroll. Yep, and he's working fine and yep. doing great work. Good. And yeah, everything's moving along. I get again those issues that come up are going to continue. Mm -hmm. Even if you were had somebody get up at three in the morning to look out the window or drive around on the roads, it's a, you know it's like. I get up now and I drive around on the roads. I check the pavement. You do. Yeah, okay. I check the pavement. You know, when weather changes. Okay, okay. so like this afternoon, all well, of a sudden. That's good. That's good for us to know because I don't think right. we we didn't know that. At least I didn't. But yeah. not at three. Not at three in the morning. Right. I appreciate Toby hearing you 
you didn't you didn't kind of amplify it, but when you were here a week or ten days ago, you said I'm making a judgment call at four after in the afternoon. Um, when we've had two systems, snow system, weather, weather systems, where that didn't work well, what you're saying is I'm making a change. So now I'm, I'm being less conservative about asking the guys to come in early, mm -hmm. right? And you meant that. You're not, you're not being rhetorical. No, no. Right. Yeah. So we might, well, because we might... it reflects on, on the road crew of mm -hmm. not being out there doing their job. Right, so, absolutely. So I will be more proactive about putting them out, even though an okay. event may not turn out to be significant, but it will just mean that they'll Did you up. tell the person who called that? I did. That, frankly, is not what... that. How you're characterizing the call, the call is not how it filtered its way back to us. That happens often. So it's good good to yeah. know if you were forthcoming that you're actually right. making a change. Yeah. Well, I guess it's a change. Um, it's a little it's more a, aggressive. So it's so so for me, I don't have 20 years of making these decisions. I have two weeks of making these decisions. So I'm learning from a couple of right. events that have happened. I think it's great to say that when people call you. Say, you know, thanks for the call. I'm learning. I appreciate the feedback. Yeah. Um, Vulnerable people like that. Um, the other question I had is the school asked about who do they call. Mm -hmm. I gave them your direct telephone numbers. Yep. Um, so I just want to confirm that and I'll follow up a little bit more with them after the conversation tonight mm -hmm. about you know who do they call if there's an issue that a bus runs into when they're out, which can happen, especially right. if John so John's going to check and make sure they have snow tires. Right, but experience, so experience already, a bus did get stuck, not because they pulled off in the ditch or make room for somebody and they got stuck. And the school left a message on the phone at the shop. Is this um, one that happened down by number 10 corner? Yeah, yeah. and um, luckily Paul was out and found them and pulled them out. And, and they got stuck right in the middle of the road? I have no idea. He didn't explain it. You know, he took care of it. Done deal. I don't, you know, I'm not sure what the issue was and how it all happened, but... But uh, uh, the reason I asked that was, is, is it related to the road not having yet been plowed or it was slick? You no, know? the road had been plowed at oh. that point. Yeah. Maybe and it actually might have been in that snow squall whiteout when it happened oh, because they were intense. that was I think it was during that event or in that period of time yeah, where it's essentially it's if you're out in a bus and a snowstorm starts, it's not about the plow or the condition of the road, okay. it's about the storm. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. so I'm going to go talk to first student and say, um, you know, okay. calling the town garage when the guys are out plowing is not really going to get you anything. Right, exactly. That's why I gave them your phone number. Right. And even so. calling me if I'm not home is not going to do it. So I'm going to talk to them about their radio <coughs> systems and whether or not they can um, put the town channel on their radio so that mm -hmm. if the buses in Dallas have an issue, they can talk to the road crews directly. Do the other towns do that? I have no idea, but it, to and me, you, it doesn't make sense for not having that right. link. Well, and if you go and you find that out, and it's something they can do, that would be good for the superintendent's office to ask mm -hmm. the other towns to do the same right. thing. Right, and again, it's from from my experience in the, with fire trucks and radios, it's just a programming mm -hmm. thing, and depending on how many channels the radios on the bus have, that it's just a question of reprogramming that. The radios, which mm -hmm. roughly is a twenty-five dollar per radio cost, mm -hmm. depending on who the vendor is. Well, so I'm so I'm going to look into that to make sure that I understand what they're. I mean, because the buses can communicate to the dispatch back in right. in Montpelier, right. so why can't they communicate to the guys on the road if that's what they if they need? An well, assist? that's right. You know, knowledge right then and there, not going through another. Right. That's a really good idea. Yeah. So I mean, it just seems to me like it's going around the horn, and it's not really. It's not going directly to where the emergency mm -hmm. issue needs to be dealt with. So that's, okay, that's and stuff. when you do that, will you come back and let us know? Because mm -hmm. I want to be able to communicate with the superintendent's office. I said I would get back to them with more right. information, yeah. or you get back to them with that. No, I will. T I will too, as far as that goes. Because yeah. essentially, if first student says we don't want to spend the money, we'll talk to the superintendent about whatever it is. It's just a question of. Mm -hmm. What's their equipment and what's the availability of? It seems like it's also a better safety 
for the buses that are out there on the roads. Right. Well, for the most part, when they go off, they're safe. Mm -hmm. It's just a question of who's pulling them out and how long it takes right. and the communication. Again, if they're relying on the town trucks to pull them out, then they have to have a better communication. I mean, mm -hmm. if they were calling their own tow truck to pull the bus out, then they can just call a tow company and have them pull it out. Right, right. But if they're expecting the town to participate, then they need to have a better communication. Right. So it's a two-way street. Right. Does so. anybody else have any other questions or comments? Okay, well, we'll see you back here on the 27th. Thank you. You bet. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, Toby. All right. Sorry for the delay. Um, pitching post. You, so does I'm everybody the, know everybody? I'm, I'm Donna Smyers yes. <laughs> from Adamant. And, uh, is that in Cowles? <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> My side of it is. <laughs> right next to our neighbor. <laughs> I am in Cowles. <laughs> And um, I have been reading on Front Porch Forum about a hitching post being put in Worcester and Montpelier and Northfield. And so I proposed that we um, add a hitching post at the Adamant Co-op. And I'm not sure if any of you, did you print off any of these for people or did everybody I get them? Okay. Yeah. Um, and so um, Phoenix Mitchell is the person who um, has, is, coordinating the whole thing and he might be able to answer your questions most. I mean, I would know from like the actual Adamant site um, any questions I've put to the Adamant co-op board of directors, can we put a hitching post um, on the corner of, uh, it's basically the corner of Adamant Road, Center Road and Haggett Road, um, which uh, uh, on the Adamant co-op Property, although it, it's you know just off the town right away, or possibly. That's what I was going to ask you. Is it, is it, is it in it, the it, town right of way? Twenty-one feet from the center of the road. So yeah, we kind of stepped it off, and it'd be about twenty-one feet, and we thought that twenty is maybe the rule. It's twenty-four feet. From oh, it's the twenty-four. Of the and we might have to modify the exact location then, which hasn't actually been totally approved by the co-op board. Mm -hmm. The uh, do they the, have concerns, the board? Um. Well, they wanted it. They wanted approval on the placement and how it looks mm -hmm. um, because it it's uh, they don't want something that would block their sign or not fit right. in with the aesthetics of right. the co-op, and they don't want anything that would impact their plowing. Good point. Um, now, Phoenix, do you live in Kellogg? I live in Worcester. Worcester. Yeah. I mean, I think this. I mean, when I first heard about it, all I like to think of was. Horses, you know, <laughs> tying your horse to the hitching post. Yeah. But that's kind of the... The name came from, actually, my friends out in the Midwest. I lived in Missouri for a little while with some mm -hmm. friends, and there was a, a store called the Hitching Post. Oh. And uh, it was actually like a, uh, it was a Benton Dent, um, kind of like food store where a second, you know, where mm -hmm. it's been Benton, they could sell on normal shelves. So anyways, it was a fun way to bring that idea back here and to mm -hmm. basically to start thinking about how we can... Uh, reduce the number of signal occupied vehicles on the road. Um, as you know, also carbon emissions in the mm -hmm. state are, it's about 50% of carbon emissions come from transportation alone. Um, and so this is just one small way that we can start reducing the number of cars on the road. And I think probably the biggest benefit is actually building community in the process. Mm -hmm. So since the Worcester to Montpelier um, portion was launched last July, um, it's only been positive and building um, community connections, people meeting each other they wouldn't have met otherwise. Um, I know, like all these people on my road, I would never have met otherwise. So mm -hmm. um, I think it's a it's an incredible community building tool as well. Yeah, it's, I mean it's a really interesting idea. And this is so you work for Vtrans. I don't work for Vtrans. I approached Ross McDonald, um, the director of public uh, public transportation, I think, mm -hmm. um, uh, back in like May last year, and he said this is a Great idea, we love it. We have a $500 grant that any mm -hmm. town can apply for once per fiscal year, um, and uh, that money can go towards supporting um, any town that wants hitching post. And so. And does that cover to cover the whole cost? That covers, so how it works is, I'm basically have like a sliding scale thing of like saying, $500 covers my immediate cost for installation mm -hmm. and everything. So 
I'm willing to do it because I want to see it spread, and I'm just putting a bunch so of. So I'm not here. clear. What exactly are you installing? Yeah. So let's I'm take not a step. anything here. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. So hitching post is basically it's it's a cedar white cedar four by four post that's typically about eight feet tall. Um, goes in the ground three feet below frost depth, and the person who wants a ride. Um, goes to the post and puts up this flag in the direction or to the destination that they're looking to get to. Where do they get these flags? The flags are attached to the post. Oh. Yeah. It's like the mailbox. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. just yeah. like that. Yep, yeah. and it's actually just like a, it's a simple bike flag, so it's a very lightweight, um, weather impermeable flag. So they put the flag up? They put the flag up, and then it signals to drivers that they're looking for a ride. And then it's, it's like this. It's like that. Okay. And then it says here you can go to this website and sign up for a ride. So how it works right now is I created a website, hitchingpost.org, and mm -hmm. that links to our Facebook page right now. Um, since it's just me, I'm doing this all just beginning, getting mm -hmm. it going. The Facebook page has been great for people because they're actually scheduling rides at any time. So mm -hmm. someone in Worcester... Um, says, I need to get to Montpelier at this time on this day. And um, then someone sees, oh, I'm going that direction that same time. Mm -hmm. We'll meet at the hitching post. So it's not just a spontaneous thing, which it can be, and which I think is what it excels at, but it can also <coughs> be a planned thing. Um, mm -hmm. VTrans has been supportive of this idea financially, but also they're incorporating it into their Go Vermont program, um, which is will be their trip planner. Mm -hmm. um, we're already including hitching posts on their map, and soon will be integrated into their actual trip planner. Hmm. So, as uh, as this begins, we're just getting rolling out the initial kind of. This will be the third phase this spring uh, that I'm hoping Adamant can be a part of mm -hmm. um, of rolling out another another phase of hitching posts. Yeah. So, does, is it that um, somebody who lives a couple miles away from the hitching post might drive to the co-op? Is it like a parking ride? I mean, I understand you could walk to the hitching post, totally. but not a lot of people will walk to downtown Adamant to get a ride. Do you want to? So, so my vision of how it would work is that probably most people would not drive to Park there. And we've talked to the co-op about parking, yeah. and if it ended up being more than a couple of cars a day, they actually said one or two cars a day there would be kind of nice because sometimes there's no cars there because mm -hmm. several of the workers <laughs> don't. Um, have cars there because right. you know, uh, Andrea and Rick share one car so she often gets dropped off and Vice Scott and Regina Regina often have one car so um, so if there's no cars there nobody really knows that anybody's there funny. and they drive by so they don't mind a couple of cars there if it got bigger we did say we would address like a sign on the hitching post saying please park such and such place, but I think most people are going to be, if they don't have access, they might get dropped off, or mm -hmm. they might walk there. Or bike. Um, or bike there, there's the bike, the little bike rack there. So oh, there is and, a bike rack. Yeah, yeah. And, um, and, and so I, I think there'd be very few using it as a park and ride, and if it got bigger, we would have to address mm -hmm. parking. Um, there's a couple of extra spots that could be used that wouldn't block the post office, or we could approach the church or the um, music school about using their unused right. lots when they're not in use. Um, I, I don't think it's going to grow to be a big park and ride. It's just not the nature of it. I think it'll get fairly light use, but it might just cut back on the people who um, are just driving from Adamant to Montpelier alone. And I think it will do a lot like what he said in Worcester, where people will be more likely to communicate if, mm -hmm. if they know they're going to need a ride back rather than going the way. The getting back thing is you go to the hub at Hunger Mountain Co-op mm -hmm. and put out the Adamant colored flag, mm -hmm. and you hope that somebody at the Adamant Co-op is coming this way, which they, they're often, every time I go there, there's so people from Adam there. Can you, can but, you back up that? Uh, yeah. What is this hub? And the hub, well, on? the Hunger Mountain Co-op <laughs> is the hub in Montpelier for where you can put a flag to either. And where, where are the co-op properties? It's right at the front door. 
Um, yeah, you oh. may not have even noticed it when you, that's the interesting thing say, is like, until I, I've, I have now seen it since I've been looking for it at <laughs> Hunger Mountain Co-op and I went by the Red Hen to see it there and I looked for it at the Worcester Post Office. If you're not looking for it, you tend not to notice it. So it does have to be something that's promoted. If the flag is out, you might be more willing to notice because it is an orange flag sticking up. You'd have to know what it's for. Up on the flag. No, it'd be a color. Like we, we were thinking we might pick tie dye for Adam <laughs> <laughs> um, Right now they have a red one and a green one. You can be creative. Can, yeah, whatever. You can, I mean, you could put an A, you could put a music sign. I don't, you know, a G clef, I don't know. Mm -hmm. Um, but it, it's just so that people there know, mm -hmm. oh, I'm headed that way, Some, somebody right here wants a ride, who's looking for a ride to Adamant? Because you, you, know, you pretty much will wait by the hitching post, but at least there's an uh, indoor spot right, right at the entrance mm -hmm. to the co-op, yeah, at might, either co-op. I might be willing to give somebody a ride back like from the co-op or something, but it would have to be somebody that I know, yeah. right. recognize, I'm not going to just... Somebody with a says they want to go to Adamant, and I don't I've never seen this right. person yeah. before. Just because of the way things are, I would be cautious. Yeah, the, well, you address safety on the website, but there's there is a register of a person signing, but you know that's all on our system. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, and odds are you would know them. It's amazing Probably. how. I mean, we live, that's the great thing about the, how this literally fits Vermont well, is because we live in these small little communities, mm -hmm. and it's amazing how many people, you know, the, the <coughs> people that we see are the people that are heading towards our community, you know, right. so it just, it just makes sense. So, so this is, a, a, this cost the town nothing? It can talk, it costs the town nothing, okay. um, if the grant goes through. And it'll be located in town right away. Is that why we're here, or is it just we sign no, up just, on the grant? Well, they need a letter of support to <coughs> apply for the grant. Okay. But I would caution you that you would need, if, if it's in the town right away, you would need to fill out a permit application. So that it is an option. If we can't find a place that's 24 yeah. feet off that makes sense, that's visible, there might be an right. option to... Right, just go to the town website, right. and there's a, um, a link to go to the right of way application. Okay. And because the actual site really does have to be approved by the uh, co-op board, yeah. Yeah. and then we'd have to make sure it's out of the right of way. Right. Yeah. So. But also in a place where you see the flag. Where you can see, yeah, because that's a you know the question: Do we put it across the street at the on the music school property near the picnic table, or do we put it across the street at my office? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, and the question is, where is it both visible but still sort of co-op oriented? Mm -hmm. And I, and we thought the corner near the lilac tree, you know, just on the corner of the co-op, would be a really good place for that. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as long as it's not like blocking the co-op open hours sign there and you know distracting from that. Yeah. Um, but it just has to be back enough that it's not in in the snowbank and it's but it's reachable to put the flag in. <laughs> so there's you know there there are concerns. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so when do you need this letter of support? Basically, it it needs. We, uh, Donna, you drafted something simple. It doesn't need to be anything complex. It just needs yeah, to be. Yeah, she had a little thing <coughs> in there. Right. And, I, and I copied the ones that Worcester and yeah. Montpelier sent. So, yeah, I gave those as examples. Yeah. So you put it in before spring? Did it frost? You know, no, frost we, we, we wait till the frost is out of the ground okay. to install. So it's so we get the, we get the mm -hmm. ball rolling now. It, it wouldn't start until it can mm -hmm. go in. Yeah. Um, with Worcester, the funds, it took a, about a few weeks or something like mm -hmm. that. Um, and I can basically, once we get approval from y'all and this letter goes out, I can begin the process of assembling the post and getting them ready. Okay. All right, select board, what would you, you paint the post a specific color so everybody um, knows? Can, do you, no, the, the post is, is natural. Can you pull up a website on, on the, the You can see a picture of it. Yeah, it, yeah. yeah. The yeah. Post. Yeah. What's the website? Thehitchingpost.org. Is it the hitching post or hitching? It's the hitchingpost.org. Oh yeah, so 
That's, so it's laser etched. I bring it to you, this generator. It's the generator. It's the maker space in Burlington. Um, and so that's the, the logo. It's a wagon wheel. It's representing a slower travel. Very cool. It's, um, and, uh, and that's the one oh, of Birch Grove nice. Baking. Um, and then there's nice. maybe one more. Anyways, it's, it, it's, it turns out really nice with the laser etching. Mm -hmm. Nice. Try to make it really attractive because we don't want to, you know, we want right. people to be looking back. Yeah. Well, it has He's, Blend in with the neighborhoods. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 You scroll down, there's a few more pictures, but anyways, you can look at one there. Yeah. Um, okay, so like more, what would you like to do? Make a motion we authorize the to sign a letter of support for the hitching post at Adamant. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, we'll get you a letter. Thank, Thank you very much. Great Thanks. Great. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'll have everybody know what it is when you drive by. All right. <laughs> I'll be looking for it now. Come on. Yeah. Keep All right. Question. Donna, John. I think I, David keeps. I keep seeing David. Yeah, David's over there. Hearing. He's around the corner. You hiding, David? No. <laughs> <laughs> You're hiding from us. No, I'm pleased to be here. Town Hall Renovation Committee. Yay! <coughs> Almost done. Yeah. It's so amazing inside. Take, take a seat. Please. It's really beautiful. Oh, I mean, what a transformation. <coughs> um, the inside people. Wow. Um, the outside people. All done. Is on the no, there's morning. still probably another week or ten days, and the interior will be completely painted. Uh, the door hardware has been ordered for the panic bar hardware and I'm at Closers. Um, I'm going to order the lights maybe tomorrow, and when they come and get Dan Cohen there, they'll not only install the fixtures, but they'll finish the fire alarm system. So the fire alarm system done, the door is all done, and we got to get the elevator inspected, but that's Bob Weber coming in for half a day, and, and then the state comes in and they put weight in it and make sure it works. Um, at that point, we're ready to call for a certificate of occupancy from the state. Um, and what kind of lock is touch pad lock kind of thing? For the outside doors? Yeah. This is what I've decided. Um, I want to talk to the renovation committee about it. But uh, for both the exterior doors, because there, there's no airlock kind of entry thing, you want to be able to pull the door closed behind you um, if the wind's keeping it open. So that means we can't use the, the kind of crash bar, the, the sort of flat one, the uh, oh. modern one. It'd be better if we had one of the old-fashioned bars. Yeah. Could, so you could pull it close behind you. Well, there are only a couple of manufacturers of that kind of bar where you can get the trim, which is the stuff that's on the other side of it. That's what they call it. And what I want to do is get a trim with a locking handle. And so when the building's locked, you grab the handle and you can't open the door. You have a key, you open it, take, uh, unlock it, take the key out, then the handle works like any doorknob, and you go in and close the door behind you. And of course, the panic bar on the other side always works for exiting. Um, now, there is an option to get, have one of the doors have a keypad thing, and it's electric, and also a physical key. But what makes sense, and probably to the tune of saving a thousand bucks, would be to have both doors keyed exactly alike, so they both work for the key, mm -hmm. and then have one of those deals you put a spare key in with a code. Oh, uh, right. You know, so so we can tell same someone. Difference. Yeah, same difference. And then we only have one key for the whole building, yeah. and uh, and we can reprogram the, uh, yeah. the little thingy. Yeah. Right. It'll yeah. help us keep better track of who's in and out. Yeah, you'll know who right. lost the key. Mm -hmm. Right. Know, have a record. Mm -hmm. um, that's about it. The, it's, uh, it is nice to go in there. It's warm. The floors yeah. are amazing because they got that radiant heat. Yeah. You step yeah. on the floors and they're all nice and warm and toasty yeah. and yeah. toes. Yeah. Yeah. The, the heat's working. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got working toilets and sinks. Um, yeah, it's in good yeah. shape. I assume everybody here has seen it. How could you not go and see the inside of the town? I haven't seen it. I mean, since we had that one meeting over there. Yeah. Well, and that was even a huge improvement over oh, what yeah, it was. Yeah, oh, the true. floors are in. That's fun to see. The trim's all up. Mm -hmm. Now, in 
Cliff's got this called up here. Door hardware. Can we start at the top? Yeah, let's start at the top. You want to take the lead on? Yeah, yeah. so um, sure. so I just wanted to give you an idea of where we were with the extent. I think a hard copy would be the next one. Yeah, I got it. Um, so, uh, Money Up to Come is the Historical Society and the Arts Council grant, and I'm submitting the Arts Council grant this week, and the one thing that I needed was a letter from the community, and David has written one from Friends of the Town Hall. Okay. Right. To talk about how wonderful the building will be to, mm -hmm. to be used. So right. I'm ready to submit that grant. Thank you, David. Um, and then expenses that haven't been paid yet are Ben Chini for the handrails. We still have three thousand dollars left for um, accessibility solutions for the lift. He has to come back and inspect it, John. We have a little bit of wiring to do that has to be there when the state comes. Right. Oh, Weber has to be there. Um, there's a reimbursement to John for paint and vinyl floor expenses <coughs> in with your orders. Yeah, um, those are in the from the East Buckley Home Center? Is that uh, the one? It's whatever's in your order. Though. Yeah. Um, and then the door hardware, which I think, didn't you order that today? Uh, <coughs> um, no, Dan Cowan still has to come back. And I don't know, I know all his materials are there to finish the job. I don't know if he's going to charge us more for labor. What does he have to do? All Anything that's, oh, that's mounted on the surface. The light fixtures in, the, mm -hmm. the fire alarm, pole stations, all that stuff. And he's probably going to have to get the state to come in. He'll be there when the state comes and test the whole system out. And he didn't want to finish the, do that until we finished the painting. Right. Yeah, because you got to put the electrical <coughs> outlets, yeah, yeah. covers on after the painting. All that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then Andy Felice has cased the windows, and he hasn't submitted a bill yet. I checked with, with Sandra. So I emailed him tonight and said, you know, the select board said you could charge for your time. Are you going to send a bill? Did he, I'm probably going to get back to you. Yeah. No, not yet. Yeah, sometimes it takes on a couple days. So then I made a list of things that have to be done sometime. And actually, light fixtures, I guess we need that for the certificate of occupancy, don't we? Well, technically, you probably wouldn't. But Dan Cowan said he's, he's only, I mean, it only makes sense to get Dan and, you know, come in in the morning and leave the afternoon and he'll get all this stuff done. Mm -hmm. So we got to have light fixtures there. <coughs> and you get to order those, John? Yeah. But you know what you're going to order. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just pretty simple. Yeah. Okay, so John's going to order those. So that what you're doing, schoolhouse lights like these again? Yeah, exactly like this in the main <coughs> room, except in the kitchen, it'll have a, a painted ring around it, green and yellow ring to match the floor. Oh, and, right. uh, and then there's uh, three hanging pendants over the serving counter. And then some pretty cheap just pendants in the, in the rear addition. And Dan's going to install those, so you don't have to? He has to install them. I, I can't. Oh, okay. He likes to select pictures. Oh, okay. Because so in order to get our. I'd like to. I mentioned to, but I can't. You know, when you're done, catch me at the door. I have some lights that came out of the uh, Catholic Liberty in Barry City. Antique lights <coughs> are like circa 1906 or something. They're beautiful heavy glass and I realize that they're bottom they're way too big for a, for a house because they're okay. meant for a big hall um, I don't know if they pass muster with you they're like 1900s vintage but I guess there was no electricity in 1850 was there uh, but you can take a look at them I can bring them over and maybe you can save some money I think I have four of them I might have six you can snap a picture send one I guess, yeah I guess. Oh, that'd, be, that'd be cool yeah. Pictures. Pictures. Okay. With a yardstick. Okay. For how big they are. Okay. Yardsticks don't go like that. Something for scale. Yardsticks go like this. Something for scale. Yeah. And, okay, so those, that's something that we still need to pay for. Right, we don't give them about the lights. Yeah. Okay. Um, so the kitchen, we have a donation of wood for the serving counter, we think. Jonas. Craig Lines offered some cherry that he has. Oh, nice. John's going to go look at it. Jim Clark will you know, volunteer to make it fit the, the serving counter. Nice. Yeah, it's a neat arrangement. Craig Lines says he's got three wood, and Jim Clark says he'll take it and 
mill it and turn it into countertops. Isn't that wonderful? Um, but then there's still cabinets and shelves and appliances. But there's not, I mean, we don't have to do that right away. We can get the certificate without the appliances, correct? Right. None of that's, we can get all this right with, without. Yeah, I'm, I'm noticing you don't have the uh, metal handrails on that list. Any place just the right. It's right there. Okay. Is, is it the, um, it's Ben Cheney for the handrails. Right. Those are all, yeah, those are all in. And then I listed some other things, like, you know, we're going to need entry mats. Um, the door jam in the in the kitchen, one of the old doors with the glass in it is going in there. Yeah, the door jam needs to be built and the door installed. Um, and then across the front of the um, serving counter, we're taking parts of the pews and, and paneling it. That's going to look really cool. Um, then there's the heat exchanger, which I think we talked about one other time. That's not on this. That's for later, right? The heat exchanger? That's not well, on this some list. of the stuff you can, you know, if you don't mind waiting, it's... it's well, not, it's not on this list. I was going to add it to my list. Oh, it's on, on, it's on there. So it's on there. <laughs> Line number 25? There's some outside work. Oh, you know why? Because this is in my list. I printed it off before you updated it. Oh. That's why. And then there's, um, you know, filtration system like we have here. Mm -hmm. um, What's the name of the company? Uh, clear, water. clear water, yeah. And we haven't tested that water, have we? I mean, it's, no. different, it's different water than we had before, isn't it? No, it's just oh, same well? Well, it's, it's a little fresher. It's this 2020 water. I mean, I had the water tested water. when I was town clerk, but you and Neil won't have it tested again. I don't know. Sure. Um, so I guess what, what we'd like to know is, and then, and then we have the renovation committee, which the majority of people on the renovation committee have morphed into the friends of the town hall. Mm -hmm. So I guess what I'd like to know is what's the select board's expectation for, you know, these things that eventually need to get done. Mm -hmm. um, you know, do you want a committee to continue? Does John want to continue? <coughs> Do I want to continue? Does David want to continue? I mean, it would be nice to see the committee continue, in my perspective, to get these last items done. Because otherwise, it's like, then who's, I'm sorry to say, who else is going to do it? Well, plus, they're, they're really about the first floor. Mm -hmm. In other words, the first phase of this project mm -hmm. is all about making the first floor essentially a completely functioning yeah. space. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, some of them are very necessary, like we wouldn't want anybody to move into the building unless there were entry mats. Right. Would you agree? A cardboard down That would be a mistake. <laughs> we have to have entry mats. Right. Um, but we can do without kitchen appliances, mm -hmm. you know, till somebody actually needs the kitchen. You know, so definitely these could be in a priority order, entry mats right. being at the top, the with perhaps lighting fixtures and fire extinguishers. Well, do fire extinguishers, we have to have those for building occupancy, I would think? Yeah. I would think. So I think yeah. Yeah. something like that, it seems like we really need to buy those. So anything related to the electrical, I assume, <laughs> has to be pretty much available to Dan Cowan when he does the final electrical, yeah, yeah. right? So, um, so is there like a range hood over the stove, or is there? There is no stove. I mean, but, no, but, we but are, the we appliances. Are going to hard, hard the range hood. So that's, Dan will have to make oh, that final connection. So you have a hood? We have a hood. Okay. Somebody gave us a hood. Okay. Oh, so that could go in even without the appliance. Yes. Okay. And would that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So we need, I thought there was some sink that we talked about one time. Well, yeah, um, Jim O'Reardon, part of his bit is the sink. Oh, so, have, so when, we, when we're ready to do the kitchen, he'll come in and put in the sink. And he has the sink. Or we have to I don't know it. if he's bought the sink, but it's in mm -hmm. his closet. So we really need a stove and a refrigerator, right? Right. Yeah. And a microwave. But you need cabinets to put the... Yeah. Yeah. Stand with steel sink. <laughs> Not microwave, so the whole sink. Yeah. But I mean, the committee can prioritize this, mm -hmm. and 
Yeah, I think that's probably a good idea. But are you expecting that John McCullough is going to continue to do all the work? Yeah. John McCullough has got three jobs of his own, so I don't know how he's yeah. going to fit this in now. <laughs> well, building the door jam and installing the antique door, is that, did you say that was Andy? You mean Andy? Yeah, I mean, it's something Andy can do. He's, you know, he's a well, then let's ask Andy to, to do that. And that feels, and John can bust and tell him what you want. Andy and I have been talking, and he's going to come in when, when the job that he has in Montpelier is wrapped up, and we're going to talk about how we're going to by the kitchen, putting the kitchen together. Well, the, the door, the door is actually part of that. So I could see Andy. I don't know what the rest of the board thinks, but I could see Andy doing build the door jam and install the kitchen, build the window seat, and construct the paneling at the kitchen counter front. Andy could do all three of those things, couldn't he? He I needs direction from John. He needs right, direction. He needs, John oh, yeah. he needs yeah. direction, but that doesn't mean we John could, has we to do the work. We could work together very efficiently doing that stuff. Is that does that make sense to folks? I mean, he's right on, you know, he's right here. Right. So is it okay if we ask Andy to yeah. do those things? Does that work for you, John? Yeah. Who likes working with Andy? He's a good guy. He's, he's, a, really nice, he's a really nice guy. <laughs> Where's the budget bill for this stuff? It's not included in there, the There's budget. no budget. So there's $1,200 from, um, from the 7000 that we... Uh, the money that we said we were going to keep rather than continue with Green Line, um, uh, $1,200 of that was meant to go into the kitchen, and, and that should be enough to pay for uh, most of the materials that we're looking at, which is amounts to screws. And light fixtures. No, 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 the twelve hundred bucks, no, it's just kitchen. Twelve hundred bucks. Okay, so the light fixtures are already paid for? No. No, that's the town had agreed to pay. I think, that's I think town. we had we had two or six thousand dollars of two Oh we budgeted. But what John is saying is that in Ernie's bid, he had twelve hundred dollars thrown in for the kitchen because mm -hmm. at that point when he when he did the quote, we didn't have it all planned out. Right. So that money doesn't in reality does not exist, but in John's head it does. Well and some of this stuff, like you said, Craig is donating the countertops. Yeah. We have the fronts for the front of the counter front. We have that because it's from the old pew. So mm -hmm. do you have an idea of how much, not including the heat exchanger or the water softener thing? Just and the kitchen. We're looking at drawer glides. We're looking at drawer poles. We're looking at, at glue finishes. Um, we actually have uh, somebody in town has offered to donate money for, for parts of the kitchen. We gotta cost it out, okay. give him the amount, and then he'll decide how much he's gonna give us. Okay. So the old fridge got chucked in the old stuff. Yeah, it was it cost us forty dollars to get rid of it. Yeah. So um, I guess we need to I guess we need to know then how much like the entry mats, the fire extinguishers. The entry aren't. mats would be like that mat over there from consolidated plastics or whatever yeah. it's called. So they're not yeah. real expensive. Yeah. So I, got the, I, got the, I got the catalog at home. And the fire extinguishers, because we have to have those. We probably have to have one on both floors, right? Oh. Yeah, well, we have a few, but you know, they all need the little tag on them that says when they were right. last inspected. So why not, have, why not just go to Roy and have him? That's what I want. Yeah. Yeah. We just call Roy. And Who's Roy? Look, Scott. Uh, oh, Roy Scott. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he does these. He does the Oldest Church. Yeah. He'll know, he'll know what we can do with what we have, and if we need a few more, we're the best mm -hmm. place to hang them. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and then it's done. But he'll give us a bill for that. Okay. So, so it sounds like the heat exchanger and the water softener, those would be later. Those are both later, and uh, they neither of those were accounted for in any budget. In the right. The entry mats and the fire extinguishers can't be that expensive, but I don't really know. Hmm. And then that person that you mentioned, you're going to price out the what is left to do for the kitchen, mm -hmm. and maybe how much time it might take Andy at what dollar amount, so we have an idea. He, did, he didn't say labor. Hmm? Oh, the person who's going to donate some money. No, but so we know how much labor is going to cost the town. Oh, I, yeah, I don't know. How much time Andy thinks it might take, roughly. I guess I'm still concerned that you're paying Andy and you're not paying John. We're not paying anybody right now. Denise, Denise is asking for the we'll budget. Pay John. Yeah, there you go. We're not saying we will pay John. 
John needs to submit an invoice. John needs to type John's invoice. Thank you. Give it to John, click the envelope, put a stamp on it. Sign his name. That's how it works. It is how it works. So there's, there's, there's still some other stuff. Uh, uh, we have to have, have accessible parking outside and we have to identify it. We can probably get away with something like we have here, which is just this one stupid pole on the ground mm -hmm. sign that says handicapped parking. But in the long run, we were actually going to put something that was a little more recognizable and uh, look a little nicer. Um, so that will happen in the spring. But, but the, the, the good the thing is, is that Alfred he pushed the dirt up against both doors. So even if the state comes for the certificate of occupancy and there's snow on the ground, and you know the landscaping hasn't quite been finalized for accessibility, at least the dirt is all the way up to the slabs. Mm -hmm. It's not dirt, it's a uh, oh, crush it ledge grows for the ground. And we've got we've got an entrance that uh, is, is, is a considered a, an accessible entrance. Right. And that's the old entrance. The main door. Right, the, the one we always door. went in. Yeah, that's going to be the dedicated accessible entry. And that still has a little yeah. shed roof. Oh, I'm sorry. Peak. That's the one Tom Cross brought. Tom Cross? Tom Cross? I think Tom Cross. It fell off one time. It did fall off one time. Kenny Miller. Kenny oh, Miller. and Kenny Miller, that's it. We made it a little shorter and we right. reconnected. Oh, okay. okay. So can they move in in February? It's not February, <laughs> March. That's, I'm, I'm thinking some 50 okay. days or something. We'll probably be uh, ready to move this table and the mm -hmm. chairs and oh. the big TV and all this stuff. And we're not paying, and the storage containers are gone, right? They're gone. They're gone. Porta potty's gone? They're gone. Mm -hmm. so the the town comes in when it snows and they plow it and sand it. It's a really nice parking mm -hmm. area. Okay, so I guess the renovation committee will continue to meet and sort of prioritize this list and tell us what it costs. And right. Okay. It doesn't sound like there's a whole lot more cost. No, I mean, there's, we might have one more meeting where, where we come in and talk to the select board mm -hmm. here, but uh, if there's a second meeting, we'll be talking to the select board over there. Over there. Yeah. So when That's the state exciting. comes in, uh, do you have to coordinate other people to be there, like, like Dan Kahn? No, because Dan and Bob Weber, they're the ones who actually schedule it. Oh, okay. So if they schedule it, then we assume they'll show up, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They do it, and they and they they, they mail us the certificate that says we're good. Mm -hmm. All right. Very good. Wow. I mean, it's like I I don't know what else to say. It's just like it's amazing. Thank you so much. It's just yep. amazing. I used to really not look forward to. <laughs> and when the mugs were running across the floor during the meetings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You'll like it now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now they take the elevator, right? <laughs> right yeah, now right. they take the elevator, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're gonna have to have a we're gonna have to have a town hall cat. <laughs> yes. Hopefully it's tightened up enough we won't see a road and drop. That's why you need the heat exchanger because they're tight rooms. Yeah, now yeah, now it's so tight that we need to have this other thing. To exchange the air. Before yeah. it was like, we didn't have to worry about that. No, we didn't. <laughs> That's true. So, so do you have pressure. the friend, the friends of the town hall on your list? Because, yes. I don't know if that's, if, are you here for that, David? Yes, yes. Okay. I'm here for that principally. Um, so the friends of the town hall have had a few meetings. Our uh, newly drafted chair is a name that is familiar, I'm sure, to all of you, Barbara Butler. So Barbara, Barbara is on a trip right now to Washington, D.C., um, so she could not be here to report on the, the friends, but she's going to take charge um, of organizing this new organization. Both Cliff and I, Scott Bassage, are all members of the board. Um, and we're going public in the town report um, and with a bit of a display at town meeting itself mm -hmm. to try to recruit more members, new, fresh blood. 
um, to this effort because our purpose, as you can see in our brand new bylaws, mm -hmm. which are uh, somewhat based on the bylaws of the uh, similar organization that Plainfield has, mm -hmm. um, the Friends of the Plainfield uh, Opera House. Um, we have, uh, if, with our purpose, um, a desire to set up a 501c3. That's in the process. Um, yeah, it's how the paperwork have been of happening right. exactly, and um, <laughs> that we assist the town of Callis with the preservation of uh, the town hall and support fundraising that will continue to to um, help develop the town hall as a <coughs> community center for municipal, community, and cultural activities. So particularly the last uh, two community and cultural activities, not so much the, the ongoing municipal uses that town hall has always been about, mm -hmm. um, we're going to have to market this new facility uh, to potential users so that that will develop a brand new stream of revenue mm -hmm. for the town by renting it out for those purposes. And you would only be renting out the top floor. That's what the friends would be doing, right? Um, not necessarily. Not, not no. necessarily because, for example, some of those uses will inevitably need the Bat, the stuff downstairs right, right. as well, kitchen, restrooms, those are all kind of integral mm -hmm. to the use of the upstairs as well as the downstairs. Okay. But yes, the majority of the use downstairs we anticipate to be the many meetings mm -hmm. that have needed this space to be developed. Right. Upstairs, um, which is really where our project has not gone very much, um, is going to need more stuff and so we're going to have to raise money to for example add to the number of seats mm -hmm. um, currently we just have the deacons benches um, so we're going to need chairs up there before we start to use it for 100 people plus right. who might chair. show up for something buy a chair and we'll put your name on the back definitely strategies like that may um, allow us to purchase additional things needed to run the upstairs. Lighting, the, one of our partners, of course, um, with the Friends are, is what was formerly known as the Blue Barn Players, mm -hmm. now rebranded as the Gospel Hollow Players, <laughs> and they anticipate being probably the first major cultural user of the space mm -hmm. when we reopen in the spring. Um, the, there's a play already in the works um, for that. So that they'll hope to have chairs by then, <laughs> or, oh, I, or at least identify chair, where chairs can be obtained for a short-term purpose. We'll advertise standing room only. Right. Um, yeah. <laughs> the pews? Where did the pews all end up that were upstairs? Well, some, oh. Well, there are, most of them were disassembled, and those pieces will be used for the kitchen. Right. Um, we still have you, Everything's there. Oh, uh, Scott uh, took a couple? Few, Scott took one, Ernie took two, one other might have gotten away. I forget where it went. Ones that, ones that all they needed was a, another end panel put on, and they would actually make an attractive kind of bench were given to people who had done some work. So I think we explained before, these were not original to the town yeah, hall. Yeah. Um, they came out of some other yet to be known uh, historic building, and in fact, they they seem to predate the town hall. They're older than right. the town hall. So, uh, because they're box pews, right. for one thing. And um, so those are what we're going to use to for finishes downstairs, maybe, who knows, some finishes upstairs yes. as well. And um, 
uh, the deacon's benches, we do believe, are original to the mm -hmm. town hall. Mm -hmm. they, have, they are the right thing. Do for, they need to be repaired? Yeah. We have nine of them total. Seven, I thought. Seven. Maybe nine, but what whatever we need, have, none of them got What do they, they just need to be, like, glued and... Yeah, there's one that I know that we've got downstairs. Let down me there. ask, yeah. um, Roger's really good at that kind of stuff. Let me ask him if he would volunteer to... But, but we had Chris Call's play with just what we have now. True. Yeah. And, and then there were over 100 people there. Yes. On one night. And yeah. they used... Because we have those wooden fold-up chairs. The wooden fold-up, the wooden chairs. Fold -up, that's right. And we yeah, have the right. little wooden yeah, those, chairs. The, classic little, 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 the little, little wooden chairs. chairs. Yeah, they're like, they used to be downstairs. That's correct. Right. They yeah. were downstairs. Yeah. Now they can be upstairs. Or yeah. downstairs, yeah. frankly. Yeah. They'll be there for your meetings, too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, those are those funny little... Yeah. Right, so I think I think those will work for now. I think those may... Ultimately, I think the vision would be to have more comfortable seating upstairs and yeah. probably continue to use the little wooden chairs for meetings downstairs so that they weren't constantly being right. dragged up and down. Well, the plan is to have stackable chairs upstairs so that, right. can, that all space can yeah. be used for something other Stackable, than. somewhat upholstered right. Yeah, cushion chairs. seats and backs. Yeah, and yeah it would make it a lot, lot more fun. But it was also nice if you ever wanted to have something else besides a play or something like that where people want to <coughs> dance or what. Mm -hmm. Roller <laughs> hockey. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> Are these final? I expect no, nothing less. You know, I don't think it's final, Sharon. Sure. I, mean, I think oh, it's a draft. David, to get it's a draft. I circle. Yeah, this is just a draft. So if you have any additional, um, this hasn't gone yet to the Secretary of State's office. Well, I guess we need to but, talk. Right. I mean, and at some point we'll have to talk about, you know, who you have a treasurer, I assume, that's going to keep track of your. Yes, funds. and that's that's one of the things we're actually at our very next meeting, um, the week of. Uh, January 20 whatever. 20th or 27th? 20, I, it's not next week, so it's the week after. 27th. 27th. 29th today. So at our meeting that week, we have David Strong from oh, the good. Plainfield Opera House mm -hmm. coming to well, talk came, right, to about a, right. subjects exactly like that. Mm -hmm. Right. Why is it that they have their own accounts? Um, we very much see this organization as um, an assisting organization, mm -hmm. not the organization that intends to hold large amounts of money, mm -hmm. but <coughs> as the facility to bring money in mm -hmm. that ultimately should go to the town. Right. That, I believe, is what we consider our purpose to be, um, to either go directly to Develop, further developing the hall, mm -hmm. or um, to uh, just enhance the the ability to okay. use it, it in a variety be, of ways. It might be good to ask Sandra to sit in on that discussion about the the money because sure. if you if the friends are their own five hundred one c three, then they're my understanding is you have to hold that money yourself. And the, and the town wouldn't. But I'm not sure. speaking for her. I just, I think right. that's what I I heard. think Dave is going to talk to us about drafting an MOU mm -hmm. between the town and the organization. So it's mm -hmm. that, or uh, rather than the bylaws, which we were told were not the place to put the that's relationship, right. the relationships. Um, that should be a separate document right. that we develop with you right. uh, the, that spells out what the friends are right. providing, what the town provides, right. makes what, it a very clear relationship. Right, and if somebody uses the town hall, you know, what percentage or what is the cost to the town for somebody to use that? What is the friends, yeah. what does the town... Yeah, I mean, so I think you're right that we need some kind of document outlining some of that. I stuff. mean, they've used, um, as I think you remember, uh, Plainfield went through a variety of yes. 
managing mechanisms. Well, and we can learn from them. And exactly. Right. And ultimately, they came to the solution that we're mirroring right now. Yeah. Uh, having a friends organization manage the hall to mm -hmm. some extent for the town and market the hall to potential users. Mm -hmm. um, those being uh, things that otherwise the town would have to take care of. Right. Um, and raising money. Yeah. Right. David, the, the bylaws, I didn't find anywhere that one of the, I'm glad you mentioned it, but I didn't see in here, I was looking for it, that one of the purposes is to manage the town hall and presumably one piece of that is manage a scheduling process. Well, that would be part of what he's talking about. Okay. That, yeah. that we would spell out in this MOU, mm -hmm. okay. um, which I think would be very specific. Right. In here, we're saying it in a very general way. Right, and that's um, what bylaws are different. That, than we'll, right. that we assist the town with this, we assist the town mm -hmm. with that. Mm -hmm. We even don't completely take responsibility for fund even fundraising, you know, because one of the key sources for the future for the town hall that would not be available to other facilities in town um, is tax support. Mm -hmm. So this is um, dividing the line between what we feel should be tax support mm -hmm. and what should be private fundraising is one of the trickier things yeah. with government buildings. Um, you have experience. Take it from me. You have, um, you have some experience, <laughs> don't you, David? I do. So um, because those buildings do need to be supported by everybody, and they do that through their taxes. But there are areas that we can more clearly define that make sense to, for the friends to be responsible for those areas. Well, I think between your experience and what we heard from the experiences of the folks in Plainfield who went through several iterations of trying to figure <coughs> this out, I think we have, you know. Yeah. Yeah. A good well what we don't have that Plainfield has always had is a long history of using it for cultural purposes. Right. Um, that's brand new territory for the Catalyst mm -hmm. Town Hall. Yeah. Um, and uh, so it is going to be a little, a little hard at first, I'm we'll figure imagining, it out. Uh, to get uh, potential performers used to using this mm -hmm. or to think about using it this space mm -hmm. um, at first, but it'll, it's also the brand new thing, so right. a lot of people will want to try it out, right. and I um, hope so. we'll hope for the best. Right. Yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to having it as some additional meeting space. Yes, yeah. absolutely. You don't describe how a person becomes a member? I don't think it is in there. It's in there. Uh, well, we're not, not in the bylaws. There's um, some, uh, there is something in there. So though. we're we will be developing a, an approach to the town that will go live at town meeting, mm -hmm. but probably not a whole lot before then, because we do need to kind of iron that out. Mm -hmm. We ourselves don't know the structure yet. Okay. Um, well, yeah, but there's it, it says um, something what here it about. Takes. Um, membership and some people can just be a member but they're not on the board so I did, oh, yeah. see, I did see stuff in there about that yeah there will be membership mm -hmm. but it's yet to be defined what as to and what but I think we want to keep it kind of flexible too we didn't yes want to, like the all West church is really flexible mm -hmm. you, you know right it's like you don't have to sign anything we want it to be very accessible so I okay, doubt that it'll right. be a very uh, Costly thing, yeah, and, keep it and so for know. example, right. many friends groups um, volunteering is just as important as giving them money. Oh, absolutely. So uh, it's that volunteering that will be the other key yeah. uh, right. way to be a friend. Mm -hmm. you, you'll automatically be a friend if you're doing right. the labor. Not right, just yeah, like the Old West Church. You know, we get a mailing, or Robinson Sawmill yep. get a mailing, you know. I'm not sure. on their boards, but I get their stuff as yep. somebody who donated. Yep, exactly. 
in a variety of ways. Yeah. All right. That's great. Okay. Thank so you. So you'll let us know when you want to come back to the board with the. I yeah. guess Cliff's, Cliff's We're going to bring a, a, an MOU, a draft MOU, shortly after we have our discussion with Plainfield. Okay. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Good night, guys. Good night. Take care. Here's the final budget. Everybody saw her email. We need to make a motion so that it's closer with the uh, auditors. But the big So you're looking for a motion for the yeah, let's look at the global one. Oh, okay. Okay. Let's look well, at the one. People look at them and then they okay. go like, see. Thanks, John. Okay, see you, John. See you, David. See you, Don. Yeah, thank you. Okay. I went in today and incorporate. I put the amount in with the amount Sandra gave us for the um, amount to be raised. Projected income. So it is one million six hundred sixty-one thousand five hundred and seventy-four dollars. In eighty cents. Oh, she rounded up. No. She rounded up. Okay. To um, for the town budget for FY twenty-one, and the amount to fill in from um, the amount to be raised in taxes is one million three hundred fifty-four thousand four hundred forty-nine dollars. You know the article. Where's that one? This will be in the uh, meeting uh, folder. Okay. Yeah. But in the article, it doesn't even say for fiscal year 21. No, but it's, it never does. It just always says, I think, because sure. I mean, that's what is in the town report is the fiscal 21 budget. It says, it's been just waiting for as long for as I can remember. No, it just like struck me. I'm like, we've been doing 50, 20, you know, fiscal year 21, 21, 21. Mm -hmm. The article doesn't even say it. No, but it's <laughs> right. The budget in the town report is for but you're you're right. <laughs> so Sandra Good point. Put, gave us these amounts that we just need to fill in and then And Jim reviewed it, so right, we're right. assuming he thought about that. Rose's point? I don't know if anybody has over the last forever as many years I can remember. It's never said for the fiscal year. But good enough. Um, what else are we gonna do? Did you find it, Katie? <laughs> the figures. So it's it's not in here, but it's in a different document. Is that what you mean? Um, no, it should be. Is it on your document? Can yeah. you read that? Who's running oh, the here? Do you want to just read is that? Is Katie running the are you running Thank the you. cursor on this? Hmm. She can back off the I, I didn't know who was filling in the blanks. Right Are you filling in the blanks, Katie? I can open. I have that document open. I can type it right in there. Is that better? Let's see. Yeah. And then I just want everybody to yeah. know, look through the. It's, um, this guy that one two. This says Monday. One thirteen twenty. At four o two p.m. Oh no, you're in yes. town meeting, that's a problem. Go to the oh. the meet the Oh it's in today's today's folder. There you go. Did she need this? I don't know. I don't think so. I bet it's this morning. Yes. Yep. You got it. Okay. But she needs these numbers. Yep. Thank you. Um, so I've opened it as a Google Doc. Mm -hmm. right. so you won't see it I put in uh, earlier today I put in the one point six awaiting Sandra's information about um Amount of dollars to be raised by taxes. This and then the is the amount to be raised by taxes. One million three fifty four, comma four four nine. Okay. 
And do we fill in that next blank and the amount by non-tax revenue? Yes. And that should be that's right just on the difference. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah. The income of three oh seven. That's oh, this is the uh, income three oh seven comma one twenty five. And those two point oh oh numbers should equal the one point six million. And that's yep. not the whole thing. 25%. Um, I just want to make sure, let's go through each item to make sure we catch anything. I've read this thing so many times, I probably have it memorized. Um, we have the Kellogg Hubbard Library. We have the town cemeteries. We have the painting of the outside of the town hall. Um, the money for the chipper. And then we have the um, clarification on use of the conservation fund. And we have all of these things. Um, Judy sent something today. That, were mm -hmm. there any changes from what she sent versus what we have here? I'm going to ask Judy to review this list one more time on the way home. OK. I updated it several times, but that doesn't mean I missed something. Miss something. So Jim changed the total on his edit. Was it was the math wrong? What what was the total different? Um, it was something about the Callis Wood Berry food shelf. He like that says three eighty. That, that isn't it supposed to be five eighty nine? Um, I'd have to go back and look at Judy's list, but I think if we do that and double check the total, if we make the motion to approve it and then double check Judy's list. And she can go in and fix it. That's a different number. I just added those two together, and I got a different number than was in the email from Sandra earlier today. You mean back up at the first? I added Judy's together list. the social services number that's in the warning. Yeah, the 26 is the right number. I don't know why it was 25. Okay. 521 plus um, 271. It says Kellis Woodbury Food Shelf, mm -hmm. 529. It should be 53,145 mm -hmm. according to Sandra's, the total. And when you add 27132. Wait a minute, are we talking about two different things? Are we talking about this list, or are we talking about the amount to be raised in the total budget? No. I'm talking about the bottom line here. Mm -hmm. When added, according to the email we got, what, this morning from Sandra? This is from Judy. Uh, there was an, an, an email from, I thought it was from Sandra, Confirming that the total for social services counting the library is fifty three one forty five. Right, we don't put the library here. I understand that. So when you take fifty three one forty five and you back that out the library, which mm -hmm. is two seven one three two, you should get the number that's there, and that is correct. The twenty six. Yes, which is not I think what we saw in the morning. Right, right. and it's mm -hmm. because you see the Callis Woodbury food shelf says five twenty nine. Mm -hmm. And it should be, yeah, it should be 529. And on the warning, it's not 529. Yes, please. So that's Jim's number, 25A64. That might have been before. Um, that's what he sent us. So I don't know what, why that was changed. I didn't do the math. 26 I did the math three, Katie, is the one total. time when I was doing I this. I think what happened is that uh, the Callis Woodbury food shelf had not been updated when this got sent to Jim. Right. And he verified the numbers, and that's why he made that change. Okay, so he checked our math and found it to be an error. Right. right. That's yeah. Of course. That's why. Okay. He knew it was right. So we got the five. Did something else. Right. <laughs> it's not there. Yeah. That's right. right, Jim. You just didn't see it. You just didn't right. you know about the stuff we didn't tell you. Why didn't you know that? That's right. Exactly. <laughs> you can't read minds, Jim. What's the matter? It's Katie's two six zero one three. Oh one three. Two six zero one three zero zero. Right, and then we had something that went away. Home share. share, home share went away. Yeah, I think we just took that right, right. off the list because they're they're now. I don't know if everybody saw the explanation of why home share now has teamed up with the home share program in Burlington. Oh, so it's not gone away. It's just part of a bigger organization now. Is that still, Sash? Mm -hmm. No, Sash is different, never mind. 
they're still offering services in our area. And they still have a, um, an office. But now all their funding and funding requests come through some, I forget. It's some, home share something, but it's in Burlington. So it's probably, it's probably, maybe they might get more money that way. Again, we did, I had Sandra check the dates for the um, taxes to make sure that it like was the due date wasn't on a Sunday or something. Right, we did that. Yeah. Um, Fourteen, fifteen. Yeah. And then this is where we took out. Remember, other years it has said about. Um, the election of, and it said it until we got confirmation from the supervisory union that we don't have to, we're not electing on our Australian ballot, the town school directors. It's on the other ballot now. So I took those out, put in today's date. Um, I think the official, yeah, the official morning we're going to have to come take turns coming down and signing it. What Judy usually does is we'll get out on the porch and we yeah. stop by whenever. So, is everybody comfortable? Are we ready to make a motion to approve the, the and warning? And that Article 17, that's a language that we got from Jim. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, he checked that one, the one on the. Uh, Chipper. On the chipper. Chipper. Yeah, and, he, the and the one on the system. conservation fund stuff were the, really the ones we wanted him to really focus on. I see in the, in the Warrens, we have the um, invoice for the tractor. Okay. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. Well, for the 3000 deposit. Yeah. All the entire. Well, yeah, look at it. Oh, I want you to look at she's it. She's taking the loan out. Oh, no, no, that's this, right. We're this, taking this it out of the fund. It's coming out of the right. equipment fund. That's, that's why right. we don't have to have that's right. it on the warning. But this we have to have on the warning because we're taking out a loan. Look at the chipper. Yeah, okay. So, okay. what's the motion? We need a motion to approve the warning as discussed tonight um, with, and we need to specifically reference the first item or number three or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. um, the amounts of money. Article we need to specifically article approve four. article four dollar amounts. So I make the motion that we approve the warning as discussed tonight, uh, including budget numbers uh, one point six one million six hundred sixty one thousand five hundred and seventy seven seventy four seventy four dollars for highway and general fund expenditures, of which $1,354,449 shall be raised by taxes and $307,125 by non-tax revenue. Correct. Thank you. I'll second that. OK, is there any further discussion, questions? Is everybody good? Everybody no. Oh, yeah. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay, so that takes care of the budget and the warning. We need to sign off on the. Do you have your? Did you, you want to do a pass? I brought pass. I brought pass. Because on the um, uh, on the select board yes. report, I want to put in. There's a percentage that I wanted to put in, but I'm not sure what. Oh, there it is. Sixteen percent for emergency okay. services on the wall. Um, select board report. These numbers, <coughs> are, these, me. I bless you. these numbers are slightly different, guys. If you go back and compare them to what we looked at a couple of weeks ago, and here's why. When I was going through, I discovered the East Montpelier Fire Department bond of $17,077 and the station bond for thirty-five. So I added those to the emergency slice mm -hmm. and took them out of the town slice. Okay. So if that is enough to account for possibly a point from a few weeks ago. Okay. But that makes sense. 
Is that the emergency services here? So you I got it. it. Yeah, I know. If so, the, okay. when Laura gets it, she'll be able to. She can do it in color. She'll, she'll, I'll give her both the Excel version and the PowerPoint version, and that will be all she needs to say. She might end up recreating it, so it's easier okay. for her to work with. But in any case, um, yes, emergency is 16%. So which one of these is, can you just? The 60, okay, so let's start at 12 o'clock on yeah. the paper. Mm -hmm. So uh, 12 o'clock to 2 o'clock is emergency services at 16%. Uh, 2 o'clock to, uh, what is, I'm getting sick. 525 is uh, government at 30, town government at 31%. So it's general government. Yeah, but I call it town government for illustration. Mm -hmm. The town government, or 525 to 11 o'clock is highway, 49%. Uh, 11 to 1130 is social and community at 3%. And cemetery is 1130 to midnight, 11 to 12 o'clock, 3%. Okay. Great. Very nice, thank you. Social and community. Okay. All right. I think I think this visual will be very helpful. I think so too. Yeah. Highway is a huge slope. It is huge. And mm -hmm. it'll inform the discussion that people want to have it about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it might get more. It could get more, but yeah. Okay. So do we have an Gremlins got it? Yeah. Oh, the computer gremlins can do weird things. Vermont Recreational Service and did guardrails. Are those the ones on Jack Hill? Yes. They got fixed by them? Oh, yeah, they got fixed for a few weeks. Basically, if you look at the one Sharon last commented on, I think that's more or less the most current version other than the one I worked on. But what I put my own folder in there with hopes that I could get it in, and I don't think that worked. I think I had to do, I had to just retype my changes over again. Because Cliff made changes. Uh, put in some more information about technology. I made Rose's change about the town hall. That one bullet point, I moved it up. Um, I'm just going to send, Cliff, I'll just send you the pie information okay. in Excel um, and the PowerPoint. That, but I'm reasonably confident that Laura will just it's not worth us fussing around with trying to put it into that. She's gonna right. want to. No, I mean, as long as we can see this. As long as she I, knows where it is. Oh, I know, why does, I can't, why did that get Beamer's thing get blacked out? Does anybody know? That's one of those things we don't have any control over because it's probably highlighted. Like it's a percentage of wages. Is that highlighted? I don't know if it's highlighted or it was blacked out. I couldn't even see what it said. I don't know how that happened. There we go. Just highlight. Employer taxes, meters. 
And we had combat yeah. that we learned. And then this little blurb down here is what Sharon wrote, which is fine. And this is where we're going to insert the pie chart. And then either further back, either back up or back down, I didn't have the I need the um, percentages, which is now on this pie. Might be. Oh, town budget increase of three percent. That's still correct, right? Mm -hmm. I put that in, um, and I wanted to just double check. When we talk about emergency services, I think it's I think it's down. We need to make sure we put in this correct amount of 16%. Mm -hmm. It's in its blurb of its own kind of thing in the paragraph. Mm -hmm. Right here. Okay, 16%. Thank you, Katie. Katie, where did you find this document? Am I with you? I think we're together in it. Yeah, but I. I, I, I'm not sure what folder I'm in. Um, I think this is Sharon's folder, which is inside of the. Oh, yeah. I think yeah. we're in Sharon's. It says SMW Select yeah. Board Report. Okay. And then there was a Word document, but then there was also already opened. We had opened it as a Google Doc. Mm -hmm. Does that okay. sound right? Okay. But does yeah, it I opened it from a link from your email, so. Okay. So, and that, I think the one that I had was the most current. Does that include your changes? Yep. So it, it's all there. So we're all, it's all there? I can yeah. share that to you all in an email so you're all okay. linking to the same thing? That would be great. Okay. And but then, you can see, I saw that the changes I put in are in this stuff. They are in there? Yes, and okay. you can see Katie's edits are going in in yep. real time as we speak. Okay, and I think that was pretty much it. Do I think we just needed to, I can't remember if I put the date in or not. Oh, we don't have a date. Okay, we don't need a date. So if everybody's good with the select board report, mm -hmm. I think we're good. We get a motion to approve it with the changes as noted. So moved. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Okay. Finally, we're done with that. And I'll let you know when it needs to, everybody needs to stop by and sign the warning. I'm going to go home, you guys. I think I'm getting sick. So is it John? And um, I don't know how to call it first, so. <laughs> I'm, I'm sick too. It's awful. I, I just feel like I'm going to fall asleep here. And I can't get rid of that tickle in my throat. Mm -hmm. You know, when it starts to dawn on you, oh, I think I'm getting sick. Oh, no. Two of you. We we need to you didn't get me sick. We need to talk about the is there something you need me for? I didn't kiss RB you good night. I kissed Joanne good night. Mm -hmm. We need to talk about the RB talents. Is that contract. you want me here for that? Well, it'd be nice if we could come to a decision tonight, and then anything else that's left here can we wait. I'll wait for that. Um, Cliff. I don't know if anyone had a chance to review. Yes, I did. Okay, so for the final piece to be aware of with regards to if we decide to move forward with RV Tech, and I mentioned this in the select board report as well, is on an annual basis, they will provide us with this executive summary that will look at the current state of our IT infrastructure and compare that to the desired state. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry, does that look okay to you with the invoice for the mower? You yeah, that's the right number. Okay. Yeah, you gave me three. I, I, I was confused. I'm sorry. Okay. Uh, effectively, a gap yeah. analysis looking at the existing state of our IT infrastructure with the desired state. They would meet with us on an annual basis. Ruben or his designated rep would actually come in and meet with the select board so that we can have an informed number to put into our technology fund. 
If we're putting too much in, we'll know, and we can reduce it. If we're not putting enough in, we'll know, and we can raise it. Can I ask a question? And I'm going to this the last time. <clears throat> I thought the server was going to cost us 10 grand. Why is it 18.5? It's, um, it's all through the estimate there. The raw server is 10, and then there's the labor and other accessories required for full okay. implementation installation. Wow. Yeah. Are there long term recommendations to Cliff? Or maybe you're in here. Oh, yeah, there we go. Okay. Did we get a trade in on that old server? What happens to that? Goes to the recycle bin? Yeah, effectively. Can we strip it off and give it to somebody to use it? So we can ask the question. I don't know. Clean it off and it you know, it'd be nice to repurpose it somehow yeah. rather than yeah. throw it out. Yeah. As a non critical, maybe it could be a secondary backup or something. Um, couldn't use it as a secondary backup because of its age, it would be too precarious to rely. No, I meant this is a backup to the backup. <laughs> you know, <laughs> backup blows up. I don't know. Whatever someone could use it for. Well, it, it could question. go another 10 years. You never know. Or it could crap out tomorrow. Exactly. But I can ask the question, Ruben, if what happens? Where do the old servers go when they die? To the old server junkyard. Yep. Probably to the cloud. Yep. Oh. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the server, <laughs> server heaven? <laughs> Very funny, really. At any rate, with that... Bruce is on it today, man. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. With this additional piece of the puzzle, the question I would ask the board is, are we comfortable with, are we ready to uh, enter into a new contract based upon the RFP we submitted and uh, the proposal provided at RB Tech. Is this something we're willing to uh, motion, vote on, etc.? I got another dumb question. I know it's a little bit non germane, actually, very non germane. But does our server sit running 24 7? Just keeps running? Or do we shut it off at night? It's late at night. Well, and, and why do we do that? Because they service it remotely? They have remote access, there's backup routines that occur. Okay. Overnight. Yeah, it backs up at like two or three in the morning. Okay. I just want to make sure it's not just. It goes into it goes burn. into a sleep mode. Oh, it does. But it can be woken up to do backups okay. and whatnot. Okay. But it's not. It's never fully down. Okay. It's like if you have your computer on and it goes into sleep mode and you yeah. click a button, it wakes up. Right. As opposed to if you actually completely right. shut your right. computer down. So I did have some questions. Okay. Okay. Um, it says the network is running using an unmanaged, what does that mean, an unmanaged 16 port something or other? Um, basically, it's, it's a dumb switch that doesn't require. But why does it say it's unmanaged? Unmanaged, uh, there's smart netgear switches which you can remotely uh, monitor oh. and whatnot. Uh, ours, the, it's not felt that we, we need that level of sophistication okay. in our infrastructure. Right. I didn't even know what that meant. And then it, it talks, the third bullet talks about a third party vendor for credit card processing. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's something that we should uh, possibly look at. Um, Who would that be? Well, there's any number of possibilities. You could use Square. Uh, um, have you ever, anytime you've done business, there's several businesses in uh, Montpelier that have them, and maybe instead of having a regular card reader for oh, the display, yeah, it has that weird thing. Yeah, it's, it's like it'll be an iPad, yeah. and there's a yep. little square okay. on the side. Yep, yep. okay, now I know what it is. Um, there are, I mean, we could probably talk to our bank, and they could say, yeah, we, we can give you a credit card processing solution. That's All of these cost. things come with various prices and right. costs and whatnot. But I wonder why they're why are they suggesting this? Because it's security. Nimrix got an old program. Oh, because of Nimrix security. Nimrix, at its core, what it's based on, is a software protocol that's not supported by anybody anywhere. Oh. Yeah, that's. 
old antiquated. That's why we spent five thousand dollars because mm -hmm. it's screwing up and they had to fix everything. They had to upgrade they're, well, it. they're trying to upgrade. They're, yeah, they didn't raise yeah. their fees. Right. 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 Okay. Next question. I'm sorry to have some. They're riveting patches over the rust holes. Is that what it is? Yeah. Not duct tape. Okay, it says something about the four workstations needing to be replaced. Didn't we do this? Yes, but this was written this is old. prior okay. to when that happened. All right. Um, then this one bullet backups are run using a C200 locally. The C200 is aging and no longer supported. What is that? Um, same thing as the laptops are replaced. It's, yeah, as we upgrade our server, we will go to a new backup procedure. Okay, and this and is the bat, and this is that procedure. Right. Okay. Um, and everything moves away from local backups, it'll all become a cloud based backup. Okay, administrative domain hosting. What does all that mean? Um, the domain is that dot, dot, dot gov thing. Right, exactly. yeah, I got, yeah, I got that, but what does that mean as far as credentials are defined and stored in, an, in a known location? Mm -hmm. If Arbitech is the register, domain is, Arbitech is the registrar, star, domain is registered to client, so that's that Vermont.gov. Um, <coughs> Oh, you're on page two. Yeah. But but it isn't. Right. They're not the registrar. They're not. Okay, so this okay, so this is not something we're doing. Right. That's why they say if. Okay. And my last question, I think, is short term recommendations: mm -hmm. upgrade the aging switch to a managed unit. This comes back to your first question. Okay. And that gear switch. Okay. They're saying at this point they recommend that we do go to a more sophisticated more, switch. Okay. And that would be part of the replacement of the server? And that would be part of an upgrade. It's um, included in the eighteen thousand. Eighteen thousand. Okay. Right. All right, thank you. You're welcome. For answering all my questions. Good eye, Denise. So what do you think we need questions? to do? Well, um, do we want to um, vote on um, approving a, a new contract? So moved. Second. Discussion? Any other discussion? No, thank you so much for all your work on this, Cliff. You put in a tremendous amount of time and knowledge, and with all my questions, I really appreciate it. You're welcome. All right, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? What's the term of the contract? It's one year. Thank you, that's um, what I thought. And then... Um, He's going to come in every year. He'll come in every year. Right. He will address anything that needs to be updated in the contract. Mm -hmm. So that... Because if you look at our other, our existing contract mm -hmm. that we're under right now, mm -hmm. there's very dated information in it. And we right. have this agreement that that's not going to be the case. If we roll it over, it's with the understanding that it's going to be updated. Yeah. And, you know, so and it has like Toby and Donna as points of contact and things right. like this. And we right, those, that. right, that needed to be up to correct that data. And they might have that <coughs> in their system on their file, but we want a, an evergreen con if we enter right. an evergreen contract, we want it to be current right. from year to year. Yep. So that'll be part of the agreement going forward. Um, this analysis uh, will happen every year and uh, what we need to look at for where we're at where we should be at where the potential costs are where potential savings are vulnerabilities yeah i saw that there was something did, did, mm -hmm. are we all done voting did you vote mm -hmm. good so it was unanimous did we vote yeah we voted uh, you voted too uh, yeah, I saw, um, we don't need to talk about it tonight, but I want to check it out further. The Passive now has some kind of insurance for, it's included, and we have Passive insurance. Something about cybersecurity and 
ransomware and all that. I want to. I got to. I just read it quickly today. But since we're talking about all this and stuff it's now, it's becoming more common as that becomes more of a concern. Right. Um, because we're we getting insurance and the chance that they might get bit by ransomware, and then what happens when you do that is then you just go ahead and pay the ransom. Right. Well, now that. passive includes this cybersecurity ransomware up to, I think it was $25,000 or something. But I got to read it again. So and that's six. the game the ransomware people will play is mm -hmm. they'll figure out what the threshold of pain is for an like entity out. of X size and what their insurance can Right, and all they got to do is get a hold of the LCT's email. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They can do it across the state of Vermont, 25 grand a pot. Yep. Assuming they can get somebody to put that in. Right. Um, and then I guess we talked a little bit about, as part of that contract, some cybersecurity kind of training. But yes, they're willing to do that, um, but strongly recommend first that we consider other options that may be available to us through the LCT. Right, which is, brings me to my thing about the cyber passive thing that we can check and see what they have for training at the LCT. And uh, also another idea that was tossed out is if we wanted to come back to them and say, well, we'd like to have something more in depth than what's offered by the LCT, mm -hmm. they would then look to see if there are other towns they're contracted with that would be interested in a similar type program. Like a webinar? And, and do a webinar and defray the cost yeah. amongst all the towns. Okay. So I think any the uh, cannabis thing, I I I meant I made changes to it. I'll email it to all you guys. Okay, you don't have to do it tonight. Um, anything else can wait. We got a couple of people. A couple. We got to do. Um, CBRPC is going to come to the next meeting about the um, local hazard mitigation plan. Conservation commission was going to come tonight, but wanted to wait until after they met with I forget now who about the emerald ash borer plan and stuff. Um, we do next time if everybody can double check the minutes um, and let's get a motion to adjourn. So moved. Yes. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.